Hello, welcome to The Missing Link. I'm here with Mr. Ely Sia Maria, a life coach, a hypnotherapist, and a motivational speaker. Hello, Trisha. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Well, thank you for inviting me, and thank you for the you know, public access, Wallingford, to have, you know, have me on the show. Well, I'm glad you're here. I, would, um, you know, I was looking over your bio, and um, I wanted to say I'm amazed at um, your story. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely, absolutely. I won't say amazed, because when you grow up, it was, I wasn't amazed with that thing. But it is a story. It's a, it's a very interesting story. Um, yeah, we grew up, I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon. That's what, you know, I was born and raised. And we were like beautiful, you know, city, beautiful place. Uh, we had like, you know, normal life. We had a lot of fun. We went out, we had, you know, we had nice restaurants. We had like a beautiful, beautiful area. We can go from the beach all the way to the mountain. Skiing, you know, you can go swimming in the, on the beach or uh, go out to the mountain in like a couple hours. And then one day, probably in the 1974, I was 14 years old, then we had uh, something that no one wanted to have in their country. We have a religious war starting very, very strong. And then from when I was 14 years old and I was 18, I lived in the war. And basically with my four brothers and my family, we were like, you know, afraid on our lives. Um, yeah. Every day they were like, you know, shooting and bombs everywhere. So it was really, really tough. Wow. That yeah. must have caused a lot of stress and anxiety. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I mean, when, when I see sometimes living here and then seeing people get anxiety or stress about their Dunkin' Donut coffee or any other coffee or whatever, they feel like, oh, my God, you know, I, I can't have my coffee. Living in a war, living uh, basically every day, like it's your last day or you don't know what's going to happen, uh, even on the way to school, Mm -hmm. We were like so afraid to go to school because we had we hear like somebody like trying to shoot people a sniper or something like that. So we're like going to school. And I remember sometimes like moving my head side to side so in case they shoot me, they oh miss kind of thing. So that's how growing up from let's like I said, the teenager. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get yourself through that time? <laughs> Good question. That that was tough. That was probably the toughest thing. Uh, I'm going to give credit to someone very, very special in my life uh, who taught me and mentored me how to survive certain things like that, uh, how to go through life with whatever stress, anxiety you have. Uh, someone who was so, so good to me and to my, my family and my brothers that she taught us how to look at life with a different kind of view. Mm -hmm. Every time we used to ask her, like, how are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm alive. I'm above ground. It's a good day. Tomorrow, I don't know what's going to happen, but today is a good day. And that was my grandmother. She didn't know how to write her name. She was illiterate, but she knew how to tell a story. And every time we have challenges, she made it up to, into a story. Mm -hmm. And that story, that metaphor, she told us, it what make me, uh, heal, make me you know, a better person and uh, could survive that war before I left the whole country and move on. Wow. Yeah. So do you think with your life coaching and um, and your what, what you do today is because of your grandmother? I believe so. I believe so. Somehow it hits me like I used to watch her. I used to listen to her. We like we're five boys and she used to invite us over her house. Mm -hmm. And in the summertime, she used to like spray water like all over the, the you know, her uh, little balcony kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we used to sit there and listen to her. And she used to tell us stories like, Somebody told her this when she was much younger than us. And these stories, like, we used to ask her to, like, tell us more and more stories. We didn't have a lot of TV time. We didn't have, mm -hmm. like, those cell phone now or videos, whatever. We didn't have YouTube. She was our YouTube channel. Right, So right. we used to ask her, tell us the story again. And she'd tell us these stories over and over. When I saw that, when I grew up with this, it made me feel like, you know what? I grew up in a hard kind of life. I have a lot of challenges in my life. Today I want to do something very special. I want to help other people. I want to try to tell them my story, like my grandma told me her story, and then how from my story maybe they can uh, learn something or maybe they can become better or right. have better life and be happy. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm sure Thank grandmother you. would be very proud. She's probably watching yeah. and saying, good job, yeah. good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. So yeah. can you tell me a little bit about your life coaching yes. and what that uh, entails? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, life coaching... As a life coach, I meet clients. We mm -hmm. can't tell them, we can't say they are patients, they are clients. Mm -hmm. And what I do with them, they come to see me for different kind of challenges in their lives. <clears throat> Could be 
Now we're going through divorce, relationship with the kids, <clears throat> could be career, could be anything like this, anything that they are not comfortable or they don't know how to deal with. Mm -hmm. So they come to see me and they tell me about it. So what I do, I look at them, I watch their body language, I watch mm -hmm. their tone of voice, and I watch something that they are doing that I pick on, and I take notes, mental notes usually, mental, uh, notes usually mm -hmm. and I ask them, like, well, tell me more about this, or tell me more about that. And now I start giving them suggestions. Mm -hmm. I tell them a little bit, I'm like, if I was you, I can maybe try something like this. What do you think? And they listen to me and they said, oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I'm not comfortable doing this. I'm like, okay, so we try something else. So I give them certain tools, uh, certain techniques that I learn into my, my training, and I give them some stuff like that and say, why don't you go and try it? Mm -hmm. Why don't you do this or do that? Why don't you change the way you think? Mm -hmm. I call it BS. It's not the other BS, it's the good BS. <laughs> BS is basically the, the belief system. Okay. So what you believe in. If you believe you're crazy, well, you are crazy. If you believe you're successful, you are successful. So no matter what you believe in makes you who you are today. Okay. Well, that's nice. Interesting. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. you know, that basically that's what I do. So when I, when I meet my clients, mm -hmm. I teach them how to become a better uh, person, mm -hmm. more positive. Mm -hmm. You know how they right. say, send out the uh, energy to the universe? Right. What happened? You get it back. Correct. You send negative energy, you can get it back. So no right. matter what you send out, most of the time, I, in my life, it's 100%. Come back right. the same kind of energy. If you don't like that energy, change it. Mm -hmm. Make it better. So how do you get people to actually listen to you when they leave and try these techniques? Well, um, I mean, you threaten them with guns. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, usually people, when they, when they come to me, mm -hmm. I ask them usually, this is a very mm -hmm. good question. I ask them, why do you want to change? And usually most people, almost all of us, change because they're they are in too much pain. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, in psychology, we learn that pain and pleasure, your brain always go against the pain that we can go for pleasure. Mm -hmm. No one does anything to you know, gain pain. Right. They want to gain pleasure. Even if you, some people, they say they hurt themselves or they try to act weird, like kids sometimes. Right. You take, for example, kids. They overact sometimes, you know, certain time, and they try like, to do certain things for them to be punished or yell at right. to get what? Attention. Right, right. You are a teacher, right? Right, right. So what do you do sometimes? Don't you see this in the school? Sometimes they react a certain way or they act a certain way right. to get attention because they don't get enough attention. Right. So the attention is pleasure. Although they are hurting themselves or they are doing something stupid or something. So you always go for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And that's what life is all about. So when I show them, I'm like, what do you want? Right. And they tell me, like, this is my goal. That's what I want. Right. I want to gain this. And usually, even if they don't know, it's about to be happy. Right. You keep asking them, why? 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 And they say, because. Because. Finally, like, because make me happy. I'm like, now we know that. Now we know the answer. And that's what I push for. Okay. So I ask them what they want. Right. I ask them, how bad do they want it? And I ask them, how much time are they going to work on it? Right, right. Because you have to work on right, it. Right, right. Same like muscles. Right. You work on your muscle to build muscles. Right. Your brain is the same thing. You have to build that uh, thought, that thought process, or that mental kind of capacity to right. be a better person and grow. Right. Hmm. So that's what I do. Nice. So um, I know you are also a hypnotherapist. Correct. So how does that play into the life coaching? <laughs> good, good question. They, they almost go hand in hand. Uh, my grandmother, I go back to, to her stories. Whatever she told us stories, I call it almost indirect hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Because when she told us the story, what do you do when you watch a nice movie and you see that hero giving like, accomplished a lot of things? You want to be that hero. You want to mm -hmm. be that person. So in, our, in her story, we became these people. We became that person who want to save the world, who want to do right. good, who want to spread energy, positive energy. So th he, these stories, almost we were hypnotized by her stories. Right. So when, you, when I teach hypnosis, I mean, a lot of people say hypnotherapists are some bad people <laughs> who like to make fun of you and they make you do certain things you're, you, you're not supposed to do. That's not true. It's only in the movies. Hypnotherapy about, is about someone, hypnotherapist, will help their client by focusing or by talking to their subconscious mind and through some kind of suggestions that subconscious mind will take 
believe and then react or do certain things mm -hmm. for them to, let's say, stop bad habits, uh, stop drinking, maybe smoking, overeating, even biting nails. I mean, right, it can right. be anything. Right. So that hypno hypnotherapist is guiding that person or talking to that person subconscious right. without the conscious knowing about it and tell them what to do and how to change. Okay. Now, there's a key thing here. There's a very important thing. That person agree with that hypnotherapist. They have verbal agreement that this is what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. For example, you come to me, you smoke, and you say, I want to quit smoking. So what I do, I tell you, like, we have agreement. That that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So when I put you under, when I hypnotize you and give you, put you in a trance, the only thing we decide we agreed on is to talk about smoking. And right. if I put you under, I say, when I count to, when I... Uh, say the magic word, count to three, you're going to go and kill your neighbor or somebody. <laughs> it doesn't work this way, yeah. only in movies. So the hypnotherapist is basically helping these people through life coaching sometimes right. or through hypnosis and trance, okay. how to overcome certain negative behavior right, or right. certain habits or maybe addiction. Okay. So that's what I do to, to help them. So I do both of them hand in hand. Wow. So now I do both in the same session. Okay. Yeah. So... When we take all of the stuff, the life coaching and um, the hypnotherapy, you are talking about um, you know, the missing link to your success story, right? Mm -hmm. So how does that interplay, come into play with um, the missing link? Absolutely. This, uh, another excellent question. The missing link, the reason I call it missing link is many years ago I was working with addicts mm -hmm. and I helped them through their addiction. And I want to find something titled that click in their head. Mm -hmm. and I call it missing link. And I saw it, I think, on one of the advertisements or TV, whatever. So I said, who is the missing link? Or what is the missing link? Well, usually, if you think about it, you are the missing link to whatever you want in your life. And mm -hmm. not just you. It's your thoughts. Because you are your thoughts. So when you're not thinking straight, you're missing that part. You're missing that thought, how to accomplish something or how to achieve mm -hmm. a goal or how to you know, create or get to your dreams mm -hmm. come true or how to take action. That missing link is you. Right. So when I look at people, it's like, oh, you're going on vacation. They're like, yeah, let me ask you this. Where are you going to go on vacation? If you say, I don't know, well, there's a problem. How are you going to get there? What right. kind of clothes are you going to wear? Are you going to travel by car, by boat, by plane? You don't know where, you, where you're going. You can't get there. So there's a missing part, and the missing part is what's going on in your head. Like, right. think about it, have a thought, have a vision, and then go for it. So that missing link is basically who you are or who you want to be or what you're missing to get to that point. So the missing link to your success story, that's what, what I talk to. When I talk to, to people and I want to do uh, speaking you know, engagement, something right. like that, you are the missing link. You are the missing link to your success story. What are you going to do about it? It's up, it's up to you. So you help them find out what that missing link the, is. Exactly. By changing, I call it the BLT. Okay. BLT. Not the other, not, not the one. Are you making you, me hungry? I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> me too. No, the BLT basically is your belief system. BL for, um, I'm sorry. BL for body language. Mm -hmm. T is for your thoughts or the tone of voice. So if you combine them, your body language, the way you, you act, the way you stand, you, the way you sit, the way mm -hmm. you, you know, take care of yourself. <laughs> exactly. We all like, we try like to sit a different way. So that BLT, that body language, and what happened in your head and how you say it to yourself, create who you are. Right. You said, I need to sit up straight. And then you smile. Why did you do that? Well, first of all, you change your body language. Okay? Right. You focus on something lifting up kind of thing. Right. That helps you give you a smile on your face. Right. You can't sit up like this and be miserable. Yeah. I mean, try. It's impossible. That's true. Because your head is up, you're mm -hmm. breathing better. When you want to be miserable or sad or depressed, whatever, what do you do with your body? Mm -hmm. You do this. So you right. do the opposite. So when you sit up, you breathe, you focus on that breathing, whatever, so that you change your, bo your BLT or your body language and right. your thoughts. And then what you say to yourself is how you're going to accomplish this. How are you going to achieve this? Mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to get, go on vacation? How are you going to have a raise or a promotion? Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, don't you see this in school a lot? Oh, yes. The way the kids are? Right, right. 
So tell them, change your BLT. Watch right. how it's going to be. They're going to laugh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what do you mean BLT? So that's what I do. Right. So, so, so do you work with a student with kids? I work with a teenager, almost mm-hmm. like to older people, much older, whatever in your age. It doesn't. There, I like to work teenager because you can talk to them more, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go too young. Mm-hmm. But yes, I do. I do. I did a lot of seminars for high schools, uh, kind of like um, you know uh, technical schools. Mm-hmm. I did. Uh, I did few. And teacher used to invite me every year, like come back. The kids loved you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I felt good because I tell them, I'm telling them my story. Right. And they listen to me. Yeah. Where the, the teacher like, well, this is a tough group. I'm like, no, they're not. They were fine. Right. But again, it depends how you present yourself, mm-hmm. how do you make yourself. You gain their respect. And then once you do this, then they can listen to you because they like stories. Right, right. I didn't come here and say, oh, do this, do that, you know, mm-hmm. order them. Around. No, right, right. I came to tell the story. Right. You like it? Fine. You don't like it? It's up to you. So that missing link, again is part of who you want to be and you have to find what's the missing link inside of you or inside right. your head to express or to uh, grow and become a better person okay so you're, you're t- you do quite a bit you know the life coach the exactly. hypnotherapy and now um now you're talking about being in a group so you are also a motivational speaker and you work in groups or correct group, or, um, speak in groups correct and, yeah, okay. so would you yes. like to give me give us a little bit of well, the, I, I, you know, I did this uh, for a while, and then I stopped for, for a couple of years. I was working on, uh, like, an early event or, uh, you know, kind of find something different kind of approach. Mm-hmm. It's still the same positive kind of thinking, but now I'm trying to work with companies, schools, colleges, you know, all different kind of type. And that's what I like to do. I like to go there, tell my story, and then show people that just by me changing the thought process, my mm-hmm. belief system, mm-hmm. by saying to myself, you know, I can do it. I can accomplish this. Right. And keep saying this. It's almost like faking it till you make it. Right. That's what I do. So I keep telling myself, no, I can do it. I can do it. And believe me, sometime in, my, in life, I was so like all the way bottom, and you know, I hit rock bottom. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, there's a way around it. Mm-hmm. There's something. There's a light somewhere at that, in that very dark tunnel. Right. I mean, growing in the war, it, it wasn't easy. Right, right. So when I lecture, when I talk to people, to companies, to, um, you know, like uh, group, teams, whoever, mm-hmm. even students, I tell them, don't give up. Mm-hmm. If, I, if you want to lose weight, 50 pounds, 20 pounds, you can't just run once, one day and say, oh, here we go. I feel much better. Right. I lost weight. No, it has to take more and more and more and more. It takes work. Works. Right. You can't just say to yourself, oh, you know what? I ran one day. I ran 10 miles. I almost died, yeah. but now I can lose the weight. It doesn't work this way. Yeah. Your brain is the same thing. We call it, by the way, like I'm certified in neuro-linguistic programming. Say, say that again? Neuro-linguistic programming. Okay. So we call NLP for short. Okay. Neuro is your nervous system. Mm-hmm. Linguistic is the verbal and nonverbal communication. Programming is the way you program yourself. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about that, we talk about how do you program your brain to become who you are, to do certain things. And people are like, well, I don't know how to do it. Well, let me help you. And that's what I do when I do seminars, when I do mm-hmm. one-on-one coaching. I teach them how you program yourself to change the way you believe, mm-hmm. the way you, you, you think about things, the way you act around things. Mm-hmm. You can change your whole behavior by just changing the way you program yourself and your brain. Mm-hmm. And you can do it two ways. Verbal, by mm-hmm. saying it, or non-verbal, by changing your body language, mm-hmm. like we said. Mm-hmm. Sit up tall, lift up your head. Take a deep breath, then you feel better. Mm-hmm. Listen to music, right. motion, emotion. Bring you know all this stuff work together. So all this stuff put it together mm-hmm. as a package deal, or as as I call it, Home Depot, right inside of you. You can you have all the tools. Right. So use these tools to become a better person. Yeah. And companies they hire me to talk about this mm-hmm. because they want to motivate. Uh, their employees. Right. I don't go in and say, "Oh, let's all jump up and down." You know, eh, uh, let's, no, I don't right, do that. I right. said, <laughs> "Look inside of you. What do you have to offer for yourself, personal? Yes. Professional, emotional. Whatever you want. You have so mm-hmm. many things you need to work on to have that balance of your life. Right. You do it with your students, right? Right. How do you do that? You teach them." you know, math, you teach them certain things, right. but also you try to teach them how to look at that problem right. and then how to solve it. Right. And if you can't solve it, step back, think about 
try to work different approach, different mm -hmm. things, but always believe that you can uh, achieve it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And life is all the same thing, same almost like a game. Right. So that's why I do. That's why I do motivation speaking about. So would um, what's can you give me an example of what one of your talks might be like? Absolutely. Uh, the first one, I, again, I call the missing link to your success story, and it's basically talk. I will be talking a lot about the way I grew up. Okay. Uh, talk about the war, the way how I grew up in the war, the way I get out of the country, mm -hmm. okay? Um, here's a quick story for you, I call it the flood. Story I read in one of the book. It's one of the, the, the city, you know, or town, they have like a lot of rain, mm -hmm. and the water stopped rising. And then one guy left his house, went on the roof of his house, and said to everyone, God's gonna save me. But the rain kept coming, and the water kept rising. And then suddenly a boat passed by, and they were like, jump on, jump on, you know, that will yeah. save you. They're like, no, 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 I'm waiting for God to save me. They were like, okay. So they went to save other people. And then a helicopter came in, and they were like, throw the ladder, like, come on board, come on board. He's like, I'm okay, thank you so much, God is going to save me. So the water kept rising until it washed every, everything and everybody, including him. So he died, he drowned. So he went to heaven, and he went to see God. He's like asking, what happened? So he knocked on the door. He's like, excuse me, God, do you have a minute? God is like, I've been waiting for you. He's like, listen, I go to church. I do my thing. I'm a nice person. I did everything you told me to do. I asked you once for help. And what do you do? Nothing. So God, playing with his white beard, whatever that he does, <laughs> he said to him, he's like, listen, I send you a boat. I send you a helicopter. What else can I do? So life is about this, basically, and that's why I talk in my thing. When I grew up in the war, I had no place to go. I was stuck for four years living in danger. And then one day, although I was waiting for God to save me, to have a miracle, it didn't work. There's no miracle. So what do you think was the missing link? It was me. I had to make a decision. Stay in the war and maybe die or escape. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So in my lecture, I talk about that. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of story I, I talk about basically leaving my country to, leave, to, to go somewhere else and right. to start a new life right. with nothing. That was the toughest decision I ever made in my life. Mm. But guess what? I made it. Mm. I'm still here. I'm still standing. And I'm how, still fighting. how old were you when that happened? I started when I was 16, 17 years old. Wow. I want to escape because I couldn't finish my high school uh, education. Mm -hmm. When I hit 18, 1978 to be exact, I hit 18, I'm like, I'm done, I'm ready to go. So oh, just wow. to make the story kind of like interesting is like, we had to take a car and drive through the war zone. The first day it was almost like a Rambo movie, it's like yeah. people are shooting at everybody, bombs oh everywhere, gosh. smokes everywhere, oh. dust everywhere, and my mom is driving this little tiny car, uh, they call Otto Bianchi, mm -hmm. little tiny car, and I'm like sitting next to her, I'm like scared. I'm going to die, and my mom is going to die. So we kept driving until we hit one block. Like, the road was blocked, no, no way around. And then one of the soldiers, he said, turn around, go back home. And I'm crying, I'm like, no, I want to leave, I want to leave. No, go home. You're going to die if you keep going. Yeah. So we went around, came back home. The next day, she's fired. Quiet. In the morning, like 6.30, 6 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, I'm not sure exactly. And we're like, airport is open. Let's take a ride. And my dad's friend was working in the airport, and he's like, come quick. It's not going to last. So my, dro my mom drove like crazy, like a maniac. We went all the way through to a lot of bro you know, broken building, fire, dust everywhere, smoke everywhere. Yeah. We get to the airport, like around 45 minutes ride. And we are so scared. We get stopped by certain lines, mm -hmm. as for ID, stuff like that. I get to the airport. She dropped me there. My dad's friend say, go back home quick. It's not going to last. So I get to the airport. He, he took my passport. We stamped it, went to the plane. We were like maybe 20 people in the whole plane. And then the plane left. And it was the last plane leaving Beirut at that time for like a month. Everything was shut down after that for over a month. Wow. So I escaped with my life like I was this close. Again, what do you do? You believe it's gonna, you're going to make it work. You believe this is what my destiny. If I died, I died. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Thank God, I went through the whole thing with no problem. Mm -hmm. So I went to Europe, and I escaped the war, 
and then go back to like a few years later mm -hmm. to visit. And then, but I never went back to live there because mm -hmm. the war still like crazy. So that's the kind of story I talk about mm -hmm. because if I can do that, other people can do it. Right. If I can mm -hmm. face that challenge well, with a lot of stress right. and anxiety, I mean, well, you need the tools, and that's what you're there to help. But I was 18 years old. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. any better. Yeah. The only thing I knew is I need to escape. I need to get out of here because right. this is not life how I, I, mm -hmm. I sign up for. So my grandmother's stories, talk, and everything helped me, give me motivation mm -hmm. to get out and then right. to go there. It worked for me. So maybe people didn't make the, the plane. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like it was a blessing. It was being born again. Guess what? That's what I want to teach people. I want to tell mm -hmm. them there's always hope. Mm -hmm. If you believe you can do it, there's a way. If you believe you cannot do it, it's the right. right. It depends right. what you believe in. And I'm sure you talk to your kids or to mm -hmm. your family or to your student the same way. Mm -hmm. You have to keep believing. The right. only way you can live life is believing. Right. And that, in your head, what are you going to focus on? Negative or positive? Mental attitude. We call it PMA, positive mental attitude, right. or negative mental attitude. So what do you want to do? And to me, there's no other way to live than with the positive attitude. Because if not, why living? Right. There's no, if you don't believe there's hope, right. it's not going to work. And that's what I, I, I teach. So my first talk is about this, how you go through stress, mm -hmm. through anxiety, anxiety right. or anything, even social anxiety. People talk about, oh, I have social anxiety. Why? You're a person, I'm a person, we can talk. I can tell you my story, you can tell me your story, I can ask you more about your story. Mm -hmm. We're just talking. There's no way, there's no need for us to be afraid of each other. Right. But the problem with our new technology, texting, that's all we focus on. Right. There's no more communication, there's no more connection. Right. And that's a problem. So I talk about this, I talk about how to take away all the stuff mm -hmm. and just be by yourself and loving yourself and believing in yourself without any stress or anxiety. Mm. Let me ask you a question now. What do you think about stress? Where does stress come from? Outside or inside of you? Both. Both. But mm -hmm. usually it's outside, mm -hmm. but then transform into the inside, the right. way you feel about it. Right. Right? So somebody come cut in right in front of your car. <gasps> you get right. stressed out, outside. you break, and then you're safe. But also, it comes from my thoughts. But that's what I'm talking. You absolutely yeah, right. So yeah. the way you deal with that. So you're right. But something must happen outside. Right, for those thoughts. For the thoughts to come in. So you can decide, like, mm -hmm. this person is crazy, or this person may be going to save his kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're in the hospital or something, right. so he's rushing. Let him go. So now you're, you're calm. Right, right. So whatever happened in your life is basically <laughs> what created that stress. How you deal with it is another story, and how you handle it every day, and that's why I talk about. It. So people can reach you. Um, I mean, you can. Yes. You're available for life coaching and for. Um, Absolutely. Your talks. Um, Absolutely. How how would they be able to? Reach they can you? call me, and I can always okay. give you the number. Okay. Two zero three nine one five six zero six seven. That's two or three. 915-6067. They can call me. I give free consultation. Mm -hmm. And then just because, you know, the public access, you mm -hmm. know, like I want to do something, give back, pay, okay. pay back. So I give free consultation. They can call me anytime they want, ask me about whatever. So that's a consultation. If they, if they like what they hear, if they want to talk to me more, that's, you know, we can talk about it later. But I would like to help people, to help them, you know, like guide them through difficult times like, like I did okay. have in the past. No one could help me. Right. So I had to do it by myself. But guess what? Make me stronger. Make me a better person. Right. Make right. me who I am today. Right. So that helped me a lot. My grandmother, of course, her stories were big, big help. So yeah, they can reach me or they mm -hmm. can uh, go online or find me online. My website is coming up soon. Okay, so great, it's, great. Uh, it's almost like done ready. So yeah. uh, it's my name dot com. That's basically my website. Yeah, they can reach me there. They can look, look for me, whatever, in different places. And or they can call WPA uh, Public Access and they can uh, reach me there. I would be more than happy to help them. All right. If uh, school want to help me also, I mean, need help, I can go and do, usually I do free seminars here and there to help school because that's how I pay back to the society.
Thank you for joining us on The Missing Link, and I hope you enjoyed having uh, Mr. Ely Zia Maria here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for inviting me. Thank you for having me. Thank you.